to to pray and to study God's word. Needless to say, we would have seen how that in as much as we do, there's still much more that could be done in, 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 in the sense of um, our learning. Because I believe that as we on our own go through this book, we would have seen some points that we would not necessarily have um, looked at during our study together, but some 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 things that um, grab us in our in our own private time. Um, so we continue tonight. We really um, picking up at verse twelve. But for connection, we are going to read the entire chapter so we more or less um, get the feel of, of what Paul was saying to Timothy from, from the beginning. First Timothy chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things are teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, reelings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment, with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, or a root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth or makes alive all things. And before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. When his times he will show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, 
that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Surely the Lord has blessed already and will bless again the reading of his word for his name's sake. Amen. Let's pause for another word of prayer together, please. We thank God, God Almighty, for your love, your care, your goodness, your mercy. Thanks for just allowing us to again, together, look into your word. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts collectively and individually. And so, Lord, we pray then that you will deliver us from ourselves, deliver us, Lord, from, from merely um, looking at or considering opinions, but that we might seek to know, thus saith the Lord. Hear us, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. So when last we were together, we looked at the matter of um, rich, seeking after riches, considering the deceitfulness <clears throat> of riches, um, and the dangers of wanting to be rich, to want to be rich for the sake of being rich, or the desire to be rich um, for, for self um, is, and does in fact lead to evil. The love of money is a root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And of course, we would remember the parables in uh, Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. Um, some of them, um, as Jesus explained the parable, um, the deceitfulness of riches caused them um, to not continue in the faith. Paul therefore exhorts Timothy, man of God, flee these things. Flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness um, and fight the good fight of faith. So there, there are three F's in Paul's advice to Timothy. Flee these things, verse 9. Um, then follow after and he mentions five virtues no, rather six. Righteousness, godliness, <clears throat> faith, love, patience, perseverance, meekness. Faith, or as some some translations might put it, um, faithfulness. But these are the things that as, as a man of God, the man of God, in this case, Timothy, um, is to follow after. So flee, um, the deceitfulness of riches and the problems that seeking after riches can bring about. Follow after these six virtues and then he goes on to fight the good fight of faith. Now here the term used by the apostle um, can be one of, can be seen in one of two ways. Seen as combat as in war 
or it can be seen as a <clears throat> thing, competition in 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 race. We just finished an Olympics and we have seen how um people strive and we went in with, with great expectations uh, as Jamaicans, but um we were disappointed there was no gold medal as related relates to, to the track and field. Nonetheless, guys and, and women um who competed, um they they fought. They did not just go into it um just like that, but they went in um determined that they are going to make their mark. Um or, or there was a goal in the field event. That's I said. That's it. Oh, I I said track and field, right? Right, right. right. Well, no, right. I really meant no track event. The best we got was was second place. And but could I interrupt you again, Uncle Vincent? Right ahead. I noticed that. I noticed that you changed the um the word. The love of money is is the root to a root. Any particular reason? Yeah. Um. Most of scholars are are, are read. Um, say um, love of money is a root because uh, there are other roots of evil. It is not the only root. You want to give us an example of, of what their thoughts are? For example, um, the killing, the killing that, that, that we read about where 17 persons were killed. Um, we're shot. The word out is that it was uh, um, like reprisal killing. But it didn't, it is initiated from money. There are there are scammers, competing scammers. There are competing scammers. Yeah, competing scammers and 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 then the, the guy the guy had his his two sisters and two other men killed and then he just came from prison and 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 and, and, and did this horrible act. That's the that's the thought so far, but it it seems to have originated from scamming in the area between the two communities. Mm -hmm. and apart mm -hmm. from that, however, mm -hmm. the, the Greek word for for root is ritsa. Arise the ritsa, um, and uh, the 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 outline um, is a root. And and then that which like a root springs from a root, a sprout, a shoot, right? So the 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 definite article has been put there, um, but um, it's not in the original. The original would suggest um, an indefinite indefinite article, a root as against the the root. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, so um back to where we're at. So the fight, the good fight of faith is 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 is, is um could could be looked at as I said, and in, in either com combat or or competition. Um but the, the 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 real um thought is as it relates to the struggle um that one has to to go through in combating or in competing. It's not it's not a walkover. Right? And this is what um, Paul is saying to Timothy. He, he, must, he, must, he must fight. Right? We read in Jude, I think it's verse 3, um, that we must contend earnestly for the faith. I don't know how many of us have, have read that, that verse. Contend. Um, it's, same, it, it, it's the same thought. Right? Um, be, be earnest in our um contending for for the faith we must be earnest even as we we seek to to live the life before god the idea as i said is really as it relates to the struggle that is involved in order to to get the victory first corinthians chapter 9 um paul says Knowing not that all who, who run in a race, all run, but only one receives the prize. 
And they do it to obtain a corruptible <laughs> corruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, <clears throat> so fight I, not as one that beateth the ear, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by <clears throat> any means I, when I have preached to others, I myself might be a castaway and also run. All right. So he, he, he talks about um, not just the actual race of fight itself, but um, what needs to be done in order to 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 combat well, in order to to compete well. So a real struggle. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Um, that is kind of thing. Struggle. That one who, who intends to do well, who intends to be victorious, has to go through. Then he brings in another letter. So it's not only flee, follow and fight, but he says also lay hold on um, eternal life. Um, and we should not think that what Paul is saying that Hey, make sure say you hold on to eternal life. No matter, let it go. Um, as if as if he or or Timothy was keeping himself. Um, it was it was more in terms of him. Um, as I said, as, as I said earlier, contending, um, laying claim to. Um, in 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 Philippians chapter two. We read about Paul says, um, no, Peter in, in Peter says, make your calling and election sure. Um, the, the Timothy, um, not Timothy, Philippians 2. Can you ask somebody to read verse 12 for me, please? Philippians 2, verse 12 or 13. Anybody find, can just read. What was that? Philippians 2. I think that at 12 or 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse no, 13 says, okay. No, no, that, that's what I want. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So it's not it's not that Paul is saying to 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 to, to Timothy that he must he must um literally ensure that he that he saves himself. Um, but that he works out his own salvation. That's that's the idea behind laying hold on eternal life, right? Um, let that which is in you be worked out. Um, by by how you um you live the life, the whole and eternal life. The Greek word used epilambanum epilambanum no mean. What is that? <laughs> that that's I'm necessary. I, I'm not, I'm not Greek. Pardon pardon the Greek. <laughs> um, but I can spell it for you. It's e p i. Nice? L A M B O L A M B A N O M A I. You got that? That's a spelling. Um, <clears throat> let me just tell you what it what it means in um straight from the Greek. Uh, Epilam Banomai. Lay hold on. Uh, -dum 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 -dum. Um, caught, took, took on, lay hold on, take hold. To take in addition to lay hold of, take possession of, overtake, attain, attain to, right? Take possession of. Don't just as 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 we very often saying, don't just say you saved and you know it, say amen, clap your hands, stamp your feet, nod your heads, sort of thing. 
but 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 own it, embrace it, live it. That that that's a high idea, idea, right? So it has to be more than just talk, right? It is um possessing it, holding it, um. So yeah, this is mine, sort of thing. Lee hold on eternal life. So so four things he says, um, flee those things, follow. And you mentioned the, the six virtues, and then fight, and then lay hold on eternal life. Uh, moving, moving right along. Paul um, declares to Timothy that it is God who had called him. Um, I give thee charge inside of God who quickness all things and, bef and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment with, without spot, unrebuked <laughs> until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, no, sorry. I, I I I went ahead of myself. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, unto which you are also called, and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. So um, God called him, and his response was uh, professing a good profession before many witnesses. Now, the many witnesses that Paul is making reference to is not known. Was it when he was baptized? Or was it when, as read in, in chapter 4, verse 14, when the hand of the presbytery was laid upon him? We we, we don't know. Um, and none of the commentaries I've read um, can, can identify, except to say um, it might be either, either of these two kids. When he was baptized, um or um when he was ordained by the laying on of the hand of the presbytery um the only other thing we can um allude to is what is mentioned in Romans 10 9 and 10 um that we should confess with our mouths the lord jesus right it might be that confession before many witnesses that, that Paul might be making reference to. Um, but I don't know that it matters here or there on what occasion Paul was referring. The fact is that Timothy had professed a good profession before many witnesses. Um, and that word professed, homologio, means confessed or declare, right? Timothy's response is that he confessed or declared um, this, this truth before many witnesses. <clears throat> Somebody saying something? No? Moving right along. I give thee charge. Um, we haven't met upon this word before. Parangelo. Another word. It means it's another word for command. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickness all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here Paul was now commanding Timothy, using his what we would term today as his apostolic um, authority to, to, to charge Timothy, to command Timothy um, in the sight of God who makes all things alive and before Christ Jesus. Um, no, it is, it, is like, it is like bringing him under, under an oath um, and as I said that, I, I remember childhood days when some of us, 
I don't know how many other platforms used to do it, but um, I know big people still do it when them say, um, me not tell her before God. They do it in the courthouses too. Before God, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and not, not, not but the truth. Well, 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 it's, it's a charge like this in the sight of God, before God, Paul is saying, and the Lord Jesus Christ, I am charging you. Right? God who not just sustains all things, but he makes alive. That's what witness means. God makes alive. He is seen as the giver of life. Right? That's what the, the, the Greek term means. The giver of life. Um, and uh, before Christ Jesus, who himself before Pontius Pilate, Witnessed a good confession. Um, what was the confession of Jesus before before Francis Pilate? Um, that would cause Pontius Pilate to to hand him over. Because Pontius Pilate was convinced that that this man did not deserve death in. Um, but in keeping in line with the accusations of the Jews, um, he, Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And you can read in, 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 in St. John chapter 18, the response of our Lord Jesus Christ, where he did not deny this fact. He said, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. Right, um, so he confessed and denied not that he was in fact um, king. Um, and as far as the Jews were concerned, he saying that he's king, that he's a messiah, was a charge punishable by death. The Lord Jesus did not, in the face of death, back down from this this good confession before Pontius Pilate. For when Pontius Pilate said, do you not know that I have power to set you free and I have power to, to crucify you? The response of our religious Christ, you could have no power over me unless it was given to you from above. Right, but willingly, he gave himself over to die. Now, what was this command that Paul um, had given to Timothy? First, it must be kept without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, 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 the commandment that Paul was giving to Timothy. Somebody saying something? Was somebody saying something? No? Okay. The commandment that Paul was giving to Timothy. Um we, 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 we can say it's, it's several aspects or parts to this command. And what he's saying now is that make sure that you um, keep it without spot, unrebukable. Um, unlike, unlike what those who said to keep the commandment, the, the Decalogue and the others, unlike what they do, um, they could not and they do not keep it squeaky clean. Because they obey in one point and then often in another, another point. Here Paul is saying to Timothy, uh, make sure that you keep it clean, intact. Don't go to the right hand or to the left hand. Stay within its... Um, its um, quote unquote jurisdiction so to speak. Don't step out. All right. Um that thou keep the commandment of those spot and on until and this is not and this was not suggesting that um Timothy would be alive when Jesus appeared <laughs> but rather that he does this just in case the Lord Jesus appears before his 
before he um Timothy dies. Um there's a term used for, 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 for that. Um the imminent return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul himself lived like that. Um as as we read in 1 Thessalonians 4. We who are alive and remain. It is that kind of imminence that, that Paul was alluding to here when he tells Timothy to keep the commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this should be his lifestyle up until the Lord comes, or as we know now, up until his death. Right? Because the Lord has not yet returned for his people. Who in time, part, who in his time, shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords. That term potentate speaks to the sovereignty of God, but also we should realize that this is no, not um the only occasion that this term is used and it is not only used about god um it's used three times in the new testament one in saint luke chapter one i think it is the other one in acts chapter eight with reference to the Ethiopian eunuch, it refers to him as potentate. And in this case, um, but as I said, it means uh, it means sovereign, potentate, and we can say. <laughs> Although we know that 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 God is a uh, is sovereign, uh, the 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 scriptures. If you read through from Genesis to Revelation, you find that well, well the KJV for sure um, does not um, translate any portion of it as as sovereign Lord. I know like the NIV and some and, and, and several other translations have like Lord God, what, what KJV might have as Lord God um, is translated as sovereign Lord in, in, in these other translations. Um no, this is not, as I said, a matter of this is not questioning um the sovereignty of, of the Lord. Just to know that as far as scripture is concerned. Um, three uses of the word potentate, but only one of them relates to um the Almighty God. Um, the the, the Luke reference is Luke one verse fifty two. He hath put down the mighty, and that word mighty, um, is the same Greek word for um potentate. All right, dynasties. All right. He, he hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Um, but what makes us to recognize that this potentate is above every other potentate. Um, note it. Note it. He's a blessed and only potentate. We probably would, would, would say he's the only blessed potentate. In chapter 1 and verse 17. Could somebody find that for us, please? Chapter 1 and verse 17. Um, I think it's a of first unto, Timothy. Yeah. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory and honor. That's it? 1 verse 17. Yeah, that's it. Yes, that's it. Right. Um. So... King eternal immortal invisible right that ties in with 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 with, with this that we, we have here the king eternal here is referred to as the king of kings lord of lords um so 
He's the blessed and only potentate. Right? So, um, there may be those who want to dispute this fact, but the reality is that our Lord is the blessed and only potentate, who alone hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be an and power everlasting. Amen. Now, some people might dispute this and say, but the Bible tells us that Moses um, spoke ah. of God face to face. So how can it be then that um, he dwells in an unapproachable light and no man had seen him? And yet we are saying that, that Moses uh, spoke with God face to face. Does that pose a problem to us? Hello, am I speaking to myself? Mm. Does that pose a problem? Am I am I alone in class? <laughs> oh. Let me see what must call upon to, to answer that question. <coughs> Who can I Hello? Hello? What's that? Moses never said God in his true glory. No. This never said anything about you. He said, see God at any time. But well, no. remember the time what God had to do with Moses sitting on the cliff of the rock. Yeah, no, okay. Remember, remember when uh, what? the oh. time when God had to put Moses in the cliff of the rock. Yeah, we remember that. But we also um, know that the Bible tells us that Moses spoke to God face to face. So yeah, when they put on human form, huh? When they put on human form, come in the in the in the in the, in the, in the presence of Christ. Then the, the, the Lord Bible just Christ. said that when he went to well, the house, he spoke with God, and then when him come out, him face had shine. Remember, and the people. Yes, them, remember that. Right. So so we know we have because if it was human form, then anybody should be able to to look at him. But um, that, Wait, that is, it, is it opposing what it said when it said um, no man can see God and, and, and live? Yeah. Right. So, so, or you equate that? That's you never seen them, you couldn't see them through glory. The then. It, you can't turn back the question upon the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Vincent. Yes, sir. I, I, that face to face yeah. is, is as thing for me is due to the fact that um, God spoke to Moses directly, it, especially when he gave him the command, the, the Ten Commandments, and brought some other um, instructions. Those commands came directly. It did not come through a, another revelatory medium like or other um, prophets got it. Because the Bible clearly states that no man can really see God. So, and live. And live. Yeah. Uh, so oh. that, that, when it speaks of uh, Moses seeing God face to face, yes. is that they actually have a direct conversation there was no, God did not communicate to Moses through a, a, a secondary means. He yeah, but, can, but Brother Castle, remember, you know? Yes. Um, When God first gave the commandment, yes. it was not on tables of stone, it was oral um, to, the, to the, 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 the congregation in the wilderness. He spoke openly to them. And after that, now that that the tables of stone were were, were, were given. Yeah, but, but even but then, even so, even so, that the the, 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 the initial co commandment was was um communicated to Moses directly. It was not communicated through a a, a third source. So I believe yeah, but, that that is 
what is being implied as God speaking to Moses face to face. No, no, but no. Are you, are you, how do you put it this way then, Vinny? Is as it related to him going into the tabernacle, um, meeting with God and coming out his face shining. Mm -hmm. That is that is the occasion I'm talking about. Now, when he went, yeah, to but, the yeah. don't read that when he came down from the from the mount, his face was sh shining. But in the instant of him going into the tabernacle and meeting with God, he came out face shining, and the people um, couldn't look at him. Yes, because it, it was in the presence of the Lord. And, and that's yeah, but, but Vinny, Vinny. Wait, wait, let, me, let me answer, Mrs. Go. Um, question is, what happened? Did he see? You don't God? have to see his face. What happened? Just his presence. What does that sister see? I'm saying that you don't have to see his face. It's just the presence. You are in the presence of the Lord, which is so powerful. So, so seeing him face to face is it's not it's not necessarily it's not per well, personal no his I don't, I don't think because he was he was so powerful he was so great that you cannot stand in his presence you can't see him face to face but you feel his presence which which the people oh, really? do, which is powerful which the people could not do the people couldn't see him either. They wouldn't have lived. They would have died. Their face never did shine, although he dwelt among them. Yeah. Who was it? Yes, sir. Yes. One of the Dennis. 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 It, is, it, it is not Moses alone who saw God in him. Aaron saw him also, and 70 other elders who went up in the mountain and they said they ate, and they saw God face to face. But they didn't shine when they saw God. No, they, 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 they saw God face to face. They saw God. And they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can find that in Deuteronomy. I almost should have said they see God face to face. No, it's not, it's, it's, it, I, don't, I don't think it's do that. It might have been numbered. It might have been Exodus. The thing, the thing Uncle Vincent said is, yes, sir. is uh, as David says multiple times, the Bible speak of people seeing God and, and all of that. But this is the, the pre-incarnate Christ. Um, sometimes described as the angel of the Lord. Um, we say we say we say we say Abraham meeting with him also. Um, with, with with two other angels. So it's multiple times we, we read it, and 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 the understanding in this this is a pre incarnate Christ and not the Father. I would I understand. It, 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 for me, for me, that would be like a a, a, a particular, a, a powerful presence, a that is powerful what presence of God. Yeah, that is that that is seen. The the, the presence is so powerful oh, that yeah. it is can as the, you know seeing God. Mm. But to see God literally face to face, that is not possible. Um, brethren, at night, I've just been listening. Not, I'm not saying that I have the answer. So don't, don't, don't. I'm not about okay. to say that. Um, one of the difference is not just seeing God, right? Um, which we see and read other persons have. Um, the distinction here is seeing God face to face. No, yeah. one of the thing to we must realize, you know, God is also a spirit. So any see, we're going to see God physically. It has to be a manifestation that God presents. And God manifested himself in different ways throughout the scripture. I mean, we have the pillar of fire. We have the, fire, yes. we have the different um, yes. way God manifests himself, even in yes. some pre-incarnate manner, et cetera, et cetera. Brother Smith. I mean, Brother if Smith. He even... Brother Smith. Yes. Hold the point, hold the, hold the point a minute, please. Let me just plug in my machine. If you plug in, what? <laughs> the machine, it's about to die. Hold for me, please. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, 
Yeah, muted better, Ross. Yes, I muted it because uh, I didn't want um to be stumbling around. Are you hearing me stumbling around? Good, I'm back. Yeah, man. So, so, so what I'm saying is that NSC, we're going to see as man, God. It has to be um a representation that God allows us to interact with. You know, God is a spirit. Um, God is not flesh and blood, I mean, in his pre-incarnate state. Um, he has come in some pre-incarnate state, I mean, the third man in the fire, um, angel oh. of God, et cetera, et cetera. But must also even think of Adam and Eve. Did Adam and Eve see God? I would think so. Did they see the face of God? I mean, the Bible didn't say. And we're not, we might even say this is before the fall, but um, they met with God after the fall, where he cast judgment on Adam, Eve, as well as a serpent, right? Um, I, I think it's one of those things where God's sovereignty allows um, whatever God wants to allow. I mean, the, the closest um, we have seen in terms of, let's say, post Gardner Eden is really... Um, Moses, as we have mentioned tonight, and his face was illuminated and everything. But I mean, but all of what we are reading, it will, it will still be a representation of what God wants us to sense with our five senses, right? It, it, it's God is a spirit. I don't think we can, if God shows himself to us, is really what God allows us to see. I mean, when, when, when the scripture says nobody can see the face of God and live, I don't think it's the literal blood and flesh kind of face i think it means the, the essence of god are they in you know they, they I, I don't want to say the glory or the full glory but i mean going going along that line and I, and i'd also say i don't think that will be possible any at all until we have bodies that have been transformed oh, so what we interact with and see god though, is just god manifesting himself in a different way. I mean, oh. scripture says. So the question is, of God. I mean, is that just a manifestation? God don't physically ever have a, have a net back. So, 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 brother, yeah, what, so when the Bible says that, that, that Abraham spoke with God when, when he came with the other two angels, and, and, and at, at, um, and, and I think at Solomon Gomorrah and a couple other places, well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 when and when Jacob um wrestled with him and him say, I have seen God face to face. Yeah, man, and and, and, and that's and that's their experience. But, but my question then is, what does him. this mean? No, yeah. one, no if, if, if 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 you dismiss if you dismiss that being God Himself, and even what like Isaiah when Isaiah saw Him high and lifted up. Yeah, man, Dennis. Yes, he's, he's not says not God, you know. I mean, it's whatever we easy. interact with God as man, whether no, past, present, in Bible himself. days, is just a manifestation presented for us to see or, or, or interact with. All right. what, 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 once you put a figure to God, you're, 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 you're boxing in his, his omnipresence and, and, and all that stuff. It's how God allows us to see him. Right, so, right I mean, but he, he, he described himself that having a face and, right? and all of those yeah, things. Man, and, and, and it's all figurative, right? Um, but the the, the 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 thing is too, the language can also be figurative. So when it says seeing God face to face, it might not necessarily be nose and eyes sure. to nose and eyes. It just um could also mean a very close, intimate encounter. Mm -hmm. Made in the image, made in the image of God. <laughs> um, the the, 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 the verse on Moses seeing God face to face. Speaking to God face to face. Exodus 33, verse 11. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses, and it's clearly it's not a one-off thing. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Mm -hmm. When Moses yes, turned but... again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from his bed. So God spoke to Moses face to face. Yeah, man. Um, no, no doubt there, Uncle Vin. 
But what, 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 what I'm saying, so Christ says, you have seen God, you have seen me. Can the disciples then say, we would have spoken to God face to face? Yes, they Yes. Have. Right, yes. but understand that in, the incarnate Christ there, the Father. That's right, is a representation um how God decides to represent himself or make himself um being yeah, able to be prayer to him us. coming and, and, and his pre-incarnate appearances as a, as a so, I mean, so, so, so whenever we interact with God, see him, talk to him face to face. If you're talking literally, yes. it's all no, but this, that, that, manifestation. That, that Moses is talking about. It's not mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not one such because if it was one such then 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 Abraham's face would have shone as well. Don't have to cover his face. Is yeah, it just all of God himself? So I'm saying it's, it's I don't believe it's something that we can box in and say it's definitely this. I think it's how so reveal himself present himself um kind of thing. I mean, uh, let's reveal himself to different people, different I ways. I face the shine. <laughs> You know? I think the answer lies with in, in this what Paul says. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Who, hath, who alone hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see. Um, mm -hmm. That's a light that, that no, man, no man can look at. For example, is, this is his for example, we oh. are in, but we cannot look at the sun. Yes. Unless we put on shades or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Because to just look at the sun like that can lead to blindness. Mm -hmm. And and I'm thinking that that Paul, having said before, that he dwells in the light which no man can approach unto. So that when Moses went into his presence in the tabernacle, um, although he was there together with God, he could not look at God um, like how he would look at you and me. Were they speaking face to face? Yes, it was that Moses could not um, look upon his face with all of that um, <laughs> glorious light. He, he could not. He could not um, look Amen. upon him face. Yeah, and, and not cutting. Really? I, I, I think we're saying the same thing, you know. Oh, so right. when we say face to face, yeah, it can be figurative, not necessarily eyes, eyes and eyes to nose and nose. Just, 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 I mean, just, I mean yeah, but, 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 even, even John said the same thing, you know. Um, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all, which I don't believe is us talking about sin, right? right? And and because God is light, that bright light, to use the metaphor of the sun kind of thing, if God should reveal himself, let's say, unhithered, we would be consumed. So any interface we have with interface with God is a manifestation God allows us to experience. It is just like when 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 um in Acts nine with Paul, when Paul seems to Christ, Paul seems to Christ, and when did Paul see Christ? In then glory, right? When I'm getting knocked off him us. Yes, yes, yes. Say, yes, say you, you, we are all separating. We are separating God, and not realizing that God is is three in one. And uh, what the statement that Jesus made was about the Father. Which which are the statements? Um, no man has seen the Father except oh. the Son. Right. Right. So, because so, so, because they had seen but, the Son. But but we yeah, we we okay. based on the scriptures that we see in the Old Testament, we see multiple appearances that mm -hmm. so the representation is accepted worship, and we know that is only God alone accept worship. So what we're saying is, is just a representation that was there and that's, that this, this wasn't God himself that was there. In the, no, in the, no, Dennis. When, when I say representation, no. To quote the word just, it's not just a representation. It's God manifesting himself in a way that is tolerable to us. It doesn't make him any less God, except that it's not his full glory that will be consumed in his full glory. You know, so, so, so when Jesus said, no man has seen God except the Father. I mean, except I mean, seeing the Father except the Son. See, there is more than what mortal eyes can behold. So I mean, some of it is figurative, some of it is literal. So the face to face, as I say, isn't doesn't necessarily always mean um eye to eye, nose to nose, right? I mean, the disciples can say they have seen God. 
you know, um, John, as a matter of fact, John said it, right? Um, we have known him from the beginning and, um, you know, we, he was with us and all of that stuff, seeing that, that brought up back into glory, right? Except Jesus Christ is that. talking about, but that same passage mentions God. So Christ, the man Christ is a manifestation of God in what we call or what he call or what he declares as his son. Yeah, but God in his infinite glory um, could not and cannot be seen. That is what Paul is saying. He dwells in which, which, which unapproachable which light. Which I agree wholeheartedly. Huh? Which I agree wholeheartedly. We'll be consumed. He, he dwells in, 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 in the light that no man can approach unto. Yeah. Um, I, I, and, and I raise the question so that we, we might not think that there's a contradiction between what we read here and what we read in like Exodus 30 that Moses um, and God spoke face to face. The face to face, um, as has been said, is not um, where he could have looked at God and God and looked at him sort of thing, but that he was actually in his very presence um, and not being able to, to see Quote unquote his face. So what happened to Adam and Eve now in the Garden of Eden? Uncle Ving. Well, uh, well, uh, look, let me deal with, uh, with, 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 with Uncle Archie. Uh, yes, sir. Um, when, no, when no, Uncle Archie. Is... Well, well, Uncle Archie, let me talk to Dennis. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis asked a question. Um, prior to uh, so Adam sinning. Yeah, ex explain. Right, explain prior to Adam what, sinning. Right. Um, although we'd have a record as to, but, but they would meet. Right. When they when 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 Adam sin, they hid, so they couldn't look at him. But they met, still met. But they couldn't look at him. Because he met with them. <laughs> That's why he meets with us. But 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 but, but, but there, there, well on. Um <laughs> but if you go back to Genesis, it says they could hear God walking in the cool of the day. Right. It doesn't mean so they saw him physically. Which is the point I'm making. They they hid because they heard him coming. That is after them sin, but before them sin, they, they, they heard them walking. They heard God walking in the cool of the day. No, man, we don't read about that before. It's after it's after they sin that we hear about. After they sin? God walking. It's Genesis 3, we read about them hearing God walking in the, in the cool of the day. But 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 it would it would seem to suggest that they would meet. Prior to the city. Yeah, Uncle Vin, you, you probably iterated so. Oh, Dennis was saying so Arthur was saying something sweet. Arthur, yeah. Yes. Uh, remember when Moses said that he wanted to see see God, you know. I remember when God eyed him in the cliff. Right. And pass. Uh -huh. So he, he, God said he, he could only see his his back. Yes. But not his face. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, Greg. Oh, yeah, man. I'm just saying, um, let's we miss your point. The the, 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 the glory, the unhithered, the unbridled glory of God. Nobody can see that and live. And, and anything else might be what God allows us to interact with to survive. Um. <laughs> The representation of his son Jesus Christ, the other pre incarnation of him, him head back as Archie just mentioned, and all that stuff, not his full glory. Yeah. So I can I can see Craig head back and say, Yeah, man, Mr. Craig. You know, you, you see, you talk to Craig and you had him talk face to face. Yeah, you man, know? which is why which is why I never mentioned those um, are the, over, over, the over Zoom. Are, are we talking face to are we talking face to face over Zoom? Huh? And, 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 and again, Uncle Vincent, we're separating God in a three different beings. No, not separating God. So, so <laughs> this that they were talking about, um, seeing God face to face. Yeah. So, Most the only person that we read of who um that saw God face to face. So even though Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, it didn't say anything about him seeing him yeah. face to face. This is the only occasion we read of anybody. And, and you know, and you know, even so, 
if, right. if, if Moses was in the very mm -hmm. presence and the light of the glory of God, God is also powerful to allow Moses to survive that too. But you see, then that would, I tell, say, would be um, saying that this, that the Paul writes, it's, uh, it's telling a lie. That it, it, it wouldn't be yeah, a lie. It's the opposite no, scripture. No, 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 man, no, man. Scripture. It wouldn't be a lie. It's no like, man had seen nor can see. Mm. No man hath seen. Mm -hmm. That would that would say that lie. I get you. I get you. Mm. Even Christ, even Christ said it. Only, only about gotten he, he, he have declared it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as I said, I I only mentioned that so that we we can know that there's no contradiction between what we read in Exodus thirty three and and what we read here. All right, he dwells in unapproachable light. Um, I would just have to work with that. All right, um, so so here again, moving on. Can we want to finish this tonight? You know, sixteen after already. Um, Paul returns to 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 the rich, charge them that are rich in the world that they be not high minded. Not trusting on certain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. In other words, then tell the rich people that they must not just keep them riches to themselves, but they must use it and not trust in it. Um brings us right back to Matthew 6:24. Um, no man can serve two masters, for either he will love the one and hate the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, and mammon is money. And there are people, even today, who tend to believe that because they have riches, they don't need God. And so they worship their money rather than God. So basically, Paul, I tell um, Timothy that he must tell the rich people um what they must use their riches for oh boy oh, yes try oh yes try a balance between the two eh? oh yes try a balance between the two so why can't i have riches and god no it's not it's not, it's not uh, having riches and, and and god is not a choice it is a matter of being rich know how to use your riches be ready to, oh. to distribute and willing to 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 fellowship. They do they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. So it's not an either or. It is you have the riches, then don't lavish it by yourself. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold an eternal life. Um, and that takes us back to, to Matthew chapter what is it, 6. Um, Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust doth not corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. O Timothy, another charge. Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, false so called. I think we de dealt with profane and vain babblings um, initially um, mm -hmm. when it just started um, the study in this book. We talk about science first, the so-called. And any, any science today that would seem to, to suggest that, for example, um, the creation is not, is not true, but it is uh, um, evolution. You know, said so that is false because there's no, there's nothing scientific about that theory, nothing at all. Which some having professed have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Today we have people like that, right? And as a result, they have gone aside from the faith. Um. In, an, in other places, probably Second Timothy, <clears throat> we read about people um, with itching ears. It is it is things like that. And and um, I I I suggest to us as brothers and sisters in Christ that we be very very um, cognizant of the fact that there are a lot of such teachings um, 
in Jamaica, we call it phobia. Um, and some people call it science again, sort of thing. Things that um, might appear to be um, the real answers. And people work toward that rather than looking to, to the word of God. Okay, so we are basically at the end. I don't know that there, if there's any other question, you can probably write that in a, in a, in, a, in an email, maranatha1929 at yahoo.com. Um, and if time permits, next week we we'll just quickly answer that before we move into another study. Um, yeah. So over to the moderators, please, and thank, thanks for your part, participation. Participation. And Sister Coop, don't laugh when I try to pronounce the Greek words. I am not a Greek. Thank you. Who is taking over? Okay, Sister Coop, you're going to do the announcement or you want me to do it? Okay. And um, while we're waiting on whoever, um, the, the, the thanks to the for, for Sister Joy Houston's father will be on the 24th at Mona Chapel, 11 o'clock, the 24th. Okay. Everybody heard that Sister Joy Houston's father's Thanksgiving service is the 24th, Mona Chapel at 11 a.m. If you're able to, please go and support her. And also the passing of Brother Cashley Brown's brother. He passed on Friday morning, last absent from the body, present with the Lord, which is far better. And we also remember Sister Claudette Cope, who lost her sister-in-law as well a couple of weeks back. Excuse me, on that same note, um, our brother and sister Akin from, from Galilee, Arnold and Hope Akin, they lost their son, and he, he should be buried on the, on the 31st. So we can remember the Akin family. Okay. So remember to keep those persons in prayer. Birthdays, our sister Sonia Christian celebrates her birthday today, August 12th, and our sister Ashante Barrett will celebrate her birthday on Saturday, August 17th. No anniversaries this week. On Wednesday, we meet again for prayer and fasting, both in person and via Zoom from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. If you're able, please join, if it's even for 10 or 15 minutes. And then at 7 p.m., we will have the gospel ministry um, in person via Zoom and YouTube, and the speaker will be our brother Gary Blake. So please remember to keep brother Gary in prayers. On Thursday, the Gospel Heralds meet again for choir practice at 6.30 p.m. On Friday, the Boys and Girls Clubs will meet at 4 p.m. Remember to invite all the boys and girls in your neighborhood. And then the Maranatha Youth Ministry will meet at 6.30 p.m. Come Sunday, we will meet again for the breaking of bread at 8.30 a.m. For those who you haven't seen in a while, please invite them out to this very important meal with the Lord. And then the family Bible time in person and via YouTube will commence at 9.45 a.m. And the speaker will be Brother Michael Bonsi. Please remember Brother Bonsi in your prayers as well. And then the Sunday school will follow after at 11.30 a.m. Next Monday, we meet again for prayer and Bible study. We meet at 7.30 p.m. Please try to be on time. And then we can finish our prayer on time at 8.15 to go into our Bible study. What will we be studying next week, Uncle Vincent? Uncle Herman will, will be doing next week. I don't okay, have so to... Uncle Herman will be, you will be told what will be studying. For further communication, you may call the church office at 876-930-0473, Monday to Fridays, between the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., or email them at maranatha1929 at yahoo.com. 
Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 24, verse 44. And our closing prayer, we'll ask our brother Craig to close in prayer. All right. Um, before I close, um, I, I know I came in late. Did Sister Christian, Sonia Christian, come online tonight? No, I didn't see. Yeah, <laughs> she was sharing with me yesterday, last Sunday, um, about a victory that she has. So she has had a medical condition, um, something to do with her kidneys, she was saying. And um, not giving the... the the details, but um, basically she has received deliverance and um, her kidneys were failing and what she was saying is that they are fine now. She found a new doctor and some of the other issues that she has had seem to be going away. So she said she was hoping that last Sunday she would have had the opportunity to share it, but um, there wasn't a call for a testimony. I mean, no fault of anybody, I'm just saying. So I told her she could have come on tonight and um and share it during prayer. So um since she hasn't come on, we might probably if she comes next week, we can probably um ask if she still wants to. All right. But she she seemed very happy and glad and saying, Hey, you know, the Lord has done one for her, kind of thing. So we can remember her and give God thanks for her too. Cause we know she has um had her challenges of late. All right, let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks again for your goodness to us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we can not only come to you at any time, in any place, with anything, because you are always there for us. With us always, you have promised, and you will hear our cries, you will hear our pleas, you will hear our petition, you will hear our praises even. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity that we can come even on a platform like this to study your word and to have discussions, O oh God, to remove doubts and to clear up any misconception as your word leads us to. Lord, again, we bless you and we continue to praise, we continue to worship, we continue to adore and honor you. Lord, we realize that this is beyond us as far as it is physically concerned. And as such, oh God, we thank you for your blessed Holy Spirit that dwells within us that makes this possible. So, we give you the thanks, we give you the glory for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. These things we ask, pray, and give you thanks for, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On behalf of the elders and deacons, thank you for joining. Be at peace with yourself. God is working on your behalf, and we know that the God of comfort, all comfort and peace, belongs. we belong to the God of all comfort and peace. Continue having a blessed week and a peaceful night's rest. Amen. I will not be. <clears throat> I will not be in the meeting on Sunday. Uh, the funeral will be at twelve, so I won't be there on Sunday. So God bless you all. God's God's guidance and protection go with you, Sister Cope. Thank you. Okay.